Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel, my project ideas. Today, we are going to make a C++ project on the helicopter game. So without much delay, let us see at the requirements of this project. First of all, you will be requiring an IDE or an integrated development environment for running and compiling the source code. Secondly, a text editor will be required. You may use any text editor as per your choice, but the recommended ones are code blocks or VS code. Thirdly, an operating system. Again, it depends on you which operating system you want to use, but the recommended ones are Windows 10 or any other latest version. Fourthly, we'll be requiring the simple direct media layer because we're building a game here. So now let's go and see what the code is have for us. Here, we have the header files included. As you can see, the header files are marked in blue. And the namespace containing all the constants are also declared here. The screen length, the level width, level height, helicopter width, helicopter height, all the width of the different uh, obstacles and stuff. So all the constants are being included here. You will be amazed that what is IFNDEF. It is actually a header file for the macros part. So it is a conditional header file you can say. So let's move towards the next slide. Here again, we have various header files included. Then we have a function prototype declared here. See the void sound off, the void sound on, the clean menu surfaces, all these functions are declared, which will be used in the program. Then we have the variable declaration part. We have the function that is game menu. Here all the images are being loaded. The helicopter image, the obstacle image, the background image the various uh, menu images, everything is being loaded here. Then we have a function here, mix play channel, which actually plays the pre-recorded sound. The delay function is also used here, which sets the delay that after what time your program is going to run, after what time your obstacles are going to come, after what time you are going to be collided with the obstacles, everything is decided by the delay function. Then here we have the background music function also so that you will get a great gaming experience. Next, we have the menu loop here. We have the SQL mouse motion that whenever you're hovering the mouse, the mouse pointer needs to take a shape. Because of that, this mouse motion function is used here. Here, various coordinates are being set for the mouse event. Then, while you are selecting any option from the menu, that part needs to be highlighted. So, that same thing is being displayed here. Then we have the selection sound. We have the highlight options. We have the highlighting high score part because when you are playing, your scores need to be updated timely and the, high, the final and the high score need to be printed. Then we have the instructions menu where uh, that part also needs to be highlighted. Like when we are hovering through the mouse, the particular stuff need to be highlighted. Then after certain obstacles, like there are certain phases for the game. So when you are completing one phase, you need to enter the other phase and the screen needs to be updated for that. Then again, the coordinates are very important while playing a game because the starting coordinates, the ending coordinates, while you are playing the midway coordinates all need to be properly set. Then we have the load the option images here. All the options will be loaded, whatever options you want to put in your game. Here we have instructions, play, quit. All these options are there in this game. You can see when we'll be moving forward. Then here, this is the high scores loop. For that also, we have certain images which to, needs to be loaded. The mouse hovering action also needs to be done here to provide actually a good environment for the gamers to connect with the game. Then we have the instructions loop. In the instructions loop, all the buttons which you will be using in the game, like the up button, the down button, right, left, space bar, Everything will be detailedly explained in the instructions loop. So if you want to play the game and you don't know what are the instructions, you can go to that instruction tab and you can read it and you can understand, have a great, have a look out at the instructions so that you won't be feeling left out. Then we have the escape button, which is used to quit from the game. Then here the surface pointers are also being declared and timely actually your screen needs to be updated with the scores, 
with the gaming phases everything needs to be updated timely then the scores also need to be updated and uh, how much time you have been in the game that also need to be marked then here we have the helicopter class here all the attributes of the helicopter will be declared um so when we are coming to a game there are three things in mind what are the images and the sounds to be loaded what are the obstacles and how much time are going to be in the game so all those header dot h files are being included then we have the class of the helicopter declared we have the velocity of the helicopter the score the collision box and after how much time the collision box is going to be appeared the constructor the velocity of the uh, helicopter, the movement, the shows of the helicopter, and finally the camera setting of the helicopter. That means the camera setting means the who is playing the game. That is the gamer. He needs to be connected to the game. So the helicopter view should be so good that the gamer who is going to play the game he should feel connected and more attracted to play the game. So all the initialization of the variables are the done. Then the coordinates of the initial uh, starting point of the helicopter is also set. So that we'll be knowing from what position the helicopter is going to take off and at what position it is going to be landed. Then these are the helicopter's dimensions. We need to have a proper helicopter with proper dimension because obviously if the game, if the helicopter could not cope up with the game, it makes no sense. Then you need to adjust the velocity and stuff here. We have the sound like when the helicopter will be crashing against an obstacle. To get that feeling, we need to have a crash sound. So the sound slash boom dot wave, it is actually the crash sound. Then we have the collision loop for the helicopter. So when the helicopter will be moving too far up or down or has collided with some obstacles, then we need to check whether that is a collision or not. If yes, your game will be quitted or else you will be moving forward in the game. So there should there will be a crash image also like when the helicopter is crashing against any obstacle, the helicopter needs to be damaged, right? So there also that should be an image. For that, we have the crash image. We have some crash sound also and the game over image also. Then this is the show function. It shows the various attributes which will be visible in the game. The helicopter, the camera, and the width, height, of, and uh, every other aspect will be visualized here. Here, we have the high score uh, class. Here, whatever scores you are going to make in each interval, that is going to be saved. All the high scores are uh, displayed here and stored here so that next time when you are going to play the game, you will be getting an overview that this score I'm, I made at the last time and this I need to beat in the next game. So here, the constructor, the Ustream constructor opens a certain files and exit program. If it's, if, if the Ustream could not open the file, that if there is no such file exists, so you would not be able to play the game or enter inside the gaming console. So you'll be driven out of the game. Next again, we have the read file function. This is used to read all the data that are being entered by the user. Whatever attributes, whatever transactions has been already done that will be stored. Then here we have the instructions loop again. Whatever instruction you're going to give, whatever instructions the game is going to tell you. Every instruction has been stored properly and systematically in the instruction part. Then this is update screen menu here. The mouse button is updated. The coordinates are updated. The option loops need to be updated and the images also need to be changed from time to time. The day and night images, the different phases of the game, those images, these need to be updated on a timely basis to keep the user engaged in the game. Then we have this one, which is the game menu, which has already been discussed. All the functions are there. Then here we have all the constants, whatever constants we had used throughout the code. We have a separate class or separate file to declare those constants. Then here, okay, here we have the delay function. Here we need to start the timer. We need to for, pause the timer when you are pausing the game. We need to get the current clock time, how much time we are being in the game. We need to stop the timer. You need to unpause the timer. Again, if the timer is already running and the gamer is not responding, so we have functions for that also. Here, as you can see, we have included the 
sdl.h file it is a standard direct media layer then we have the timer function uh, class here here we have all the functions related to time that is a start ticks paused ticks then start stop pause and pause all the various functions are being included here this is actually the variables part all those variables you can see depending on the surface pointers the music variables the main menu images all those variables are being declared here and uh, already these variables are being used we have already used it and uh, this gives us an insight of what variables we have already used and what those this variable mean the code i have already explained you in the previous video this i will be showcasing you the effects how it's presented so this is the main screen how it's if you want to proceed some action should be undertaken i suggest pressing one of the buttons cool so it's asking us to press on the buttons so let's play it <laughs> A bad player actually. if we want to proceed some action should be undertaken i suggest pressing one of the buttons let's play this time i was if we want to proceed some action should be undertaken i suggest pressing one of the buttons options you have sound on sound off and uh, back to back the high score section i have not made any high score my bad and then instructions we have the instructions to play this game so basically we have to prevent the helicopter from colliding with the obstacles you have to press the up key if you want to gain height depending on the obstacles obviously the down arrow key to lose height and releasing the up arrow key makes the helicopter lose it cool then quit we can quit so I hope you understood the working of this code. For more interesting project ideas, stay tuned to our channel. Thank you.